In this video, we're going to talk about the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. So we've seen multiplicative inverses of numbers. So when we write a number to the negative 1 power, that just means the number that when we multiply it by x, we just get 1. For numbers, we think of this as 1 over x. We're not going to really be able to think about it that way for matrices, but that's the idea. It's the number that when we multiply it by x, we just get the multiplicative identity, which is 1. So when we have a square matrix A, the inverse of A is a matrix so that when we multiply that matrix by A, what we get is the multiplicative identity, which is the identity matrix. The matrix has to be square so that we can multiply the inverse on both sides. So if A is n by n, then A inverse is also going to be n by n, and the identity that we get is going to be the n by n identity matrix. So for example, if we have the matrix A is 2, 5, negative 3, negative 7, then the inverse of a turns out to be negative 7, negative 5, 3, 2. And we demonstrate that by multiplying a times a inverse, and also multiplying a inverse times a, and making sure that we get the identity matrix both times. And when we work this out, when we multiply a by a inverse, we do indeed get 1, 0, 0, 1. And when we multiply a inverse by a, in the other order, we again get 1, 0, 0, 1. Now we know that not every number has a multiplicative inverse. If we try to think of the multiplicative inverse of 0, that's undefined. We can't take 0 to the negative 1. Or in other words, there's no number that we can multiply by 0 that gives us 1. So similarly, not every matrix has an inverse, although there are a whole lot of non-invertible matrices. A matrix that doesn't have an inverse is called a singular matrix, or as I just said, non-invertible. And a matrix that does have an inverse is called invertible, or non-singular. So invertible means it has an inverse, singular means it doesn't have an inverse. So it's not too hard to figure out the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. It turns out that if capital A is the matrix ABCD, and if the calculation AD minus BC, if when we do that calculation we don't get 0, then capital A is an invertible matrix, and its inverse is what we see here. The way that we would prove this is by simply computing and figuring out whether A times A inverse really does work out to be the identity, and whether A inverse times A really does work out to be the identity. So here's our calculation. Now we can pull that scalar out, so we get AD minus BC. And when we multiply our matrix in the upper left-hand corner, we get AD plus B times negative C, which is AD minus BC. In the upper right-hand corner, we get A times minus B plus B times A. Those cancel out and we get a zero. In the lower left-hand corner, we get CD plus D times negative C. Those cancel out and we get a zero. And in the lower right-hand corner, we get minus BC plus AD. That's the same as AD minus BC. And so when we multiply by that 1 over AD minus BC, we just get 1, 0, 0, 1. And similarly, when we multiply the matrices in the other order, we're also going to get the identity when we multiply them that way. So this number, AD minus BC, is what we call the determinant of A. In other words, it determines whether A is invertible or singular. If AD minus BC is not 0, then A is invertible. And we just talked about what its inverse looks like. If AD minus BC is 0, then A is singular, and it doesn't have an inverse. Now, one of the useful properties that inverses give us is that when we have an invertible matrix, then the equation ax equals b always has a solution, and in fact has a unique solution, x equals a inverse b. Now if we're going to prove this statement, there's two things that we have to prove. We have to prove that this vector a inverse b really is a solution, and then we also have to prove that it's a unique solution, that there isn't any other solution to that equation. So we're going to do this proof in two steps. First, we have to prove that x equals a inverse b is a solution to the equation ax equals b. So all we're going to do is plug that potential solution in to the equation ax equals b. So we get a times a inverse 
times the vector b. But as we've seen, we defined matrix multiplication so that we could regroup those parentheses. And a times a inverse, that's the identity matrix. And when we multiply the identity matrix by the vector b, we just get the vector b. And so this part of the proof is done. So now to prove that a inverse b is the only solution, we suppose that somebody gave us a solution. So for example, let's let u be a solution to the equation ax equals b. And then what we have to do is show that this vector u really is the a inverse b that we already had. So what does it mean for u to be a solution to this equation? Well, it means that if we plug u in, the equation is true. So now what I want to do is take this equation and multiply both sides of that equation by the matrix A inverse. We know A is an invertible matrix, so if the vector AU equals the vector B, then when we multiply the left-hand side by A inverse, that should be the same as multiplying the right-hand side by A inverse. But again, we defined matrix multiplication so that we could regroup our parentheses. And A inverse times A, that's the identity matrix. And multiplying the identity matrix by any vector just gives you that vector. And so this shows uniqueness. Because we said, well, u was any old solution to this equation. And it turned out that u had to be A inverse B. So notice that we used both of the definitions of inverse. We use the fact that a times a inverse is the identity, and we just use the fact that a inverse a is the identity. So we really do need both of those pieces to define our invertible matrix. A couple of the nice properties of inverses here, some of these are, should be pretty clear. If a is an invertible matrix, then a inverse is also an invertible matrix, and the inverse of a inverse is just a. So if we take an inverse and then we take the inverse again, we just get back where we started. If A and B are invertible matrices, and they have to be of the same size because we're going to multiply them together, then AB, multiplying two invertible matrices together, also gives us an invertible matrix. And the inverse of AB is B inverse A inverse. If you're not sure about why the order changes there, remember that we don't know that matrix multiplication is commutative. AB here doesn't necessarily have to be the same matrix as BA. And so if we take AB and multiply it by b inverse a inverse, that's the order that we'll need to cancel these out. We can regroup the parentheses, so we get b b inverse. That's the identity in the inside there. Multiplying by the identity doesn't do anything, and then we just get i. And similarly, if we put b inverse a inverse on the other side, again, we'll get the identity matrix. But it has to be in that order. It has to be b inverse a inverse. Writing a inverse b inverse wouldn't work. And then finally, if A is an invertible matrix, then its transpose is invertible, and the inverse of the transpose is the transpose of the inverse. 